Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. March 20th is the first day of spring. In the civilian world, this means that there are new spring-style catalogs going out. I don't know if they still ship catalogs nowadays. It's the 21st century. Does that still happen? Anyway, during Battleship New Jersey's active life, when spring starts, the new style catalogs are shipped out with all the season's new clothing options. The Navy did something similar. With each year, the Navy asking Congress to fund a new generation of ships. These ships tended to be progressive. Throughout much of American battleship design, there would be a new class of battleships being laid down each year, each one incrementally building on the last. To decide what modifications the Navy wanted to their new ships, the Navy would also come up with a spring-style catalog where the Bureau of Construction and Repair, the predecessor to today's Naval Sea Systems Command, would put out what their requirements were or what the Navy General Board's requirements were, and then they would draw a couple of different options that match those requirements. And those are your spring styles that the Navy brass would choose from and decide, ooh, our sailors would look good in this battleship. Then that design is developed further, and eventually it becomes a fully designed and built battleship. This would have been the first place that the Iowa-class battleship's iconic lines were ever committed to paper. You can see those iconic lines behind me. The Iowa-class is the only ship ever built, the only class of ships ever built, with that iconic bow style. And the first time it was ever drawn was in a spring-style book. So, what the heck is that? What am I talking about? If you're like me and you've studied real-life battleships so much that they're not interesting anymore, so you've got to go and study battleships that were never built, then you've probably already run into the spring-style books. Basically, every year the Navy asks Congress for money for that year's, or that upcoming year's, class of ships. With the battleships, especially the standard type, they follow a general progression. The Navy issues what they want their design requirements to be, and in some cases the, the requirements are kind of all over the place, and so they need to look at several designs to see what sort of uh, ship that's going to result in or what several different design theories will give you. A fast battleship versus a slow, well-armored battleship. Well, what, what are those two differences going to look like? Is there a difference in weight, in cost? So the spring style books are a series of drawings of all sorts of different types of Navy ships. I'm talking about it uh, in the context of the battleships, but also carriers, uh, cruisers, destroyers, minesweepers, and auxiliaries, all would have been covered in the spring style books. These are basically one page design uh, concepts with a inboard side profile of the ship i.e. it shows the side of the ship, cut away, halfway, showing what some of the major interior features would be, what's dedicated to engineering, what's dedicated to magazines, that sort of stuff, but not nearly so detailed as blueprints. In fact, most of the spring styles don't even include the superstructure. It'll show armored features like the conning tower, uh, and it'll show boiler uptakes going into a smokestack, but it doesn't show the rest of the superstructure. So it's a partial drawing of the ship, and then below it is all the weight calculations telling you what that uh, ship is going to weigh, how much of that weight is going to be dedicated to armor, guns, engineering, etc. So this is the first drawing of a ship ever made. Oftentimes, for each year's design studies, you would get a series of these drawings showing a couple of the different options that match the uh, Navy's requirement. They choose which styles they like, and then those get developed further into multi-page blueprints where eventually you actually draw out the whole ship sheet by sheet, like the final design of the ship that then goes to the shipyard to be built. Unfortunately, we don't have these original preliminary drawings for Iowa. Some of the spring styles were saved, 
and some of them were destroyed probably in the 1970s when the Navy got rid of their Suitland archive. The remaining spring-style books can be found in two places. The actual hard copies are in the National Archives at uh, College Park, Maryland. And prior to going there, they were given the Naval History and Heritage Command, which made scans of them and put them online. So we have links to two of the spring-style books. Book one, which was uh, post-World War I, primarily into the uh, 20s, and book three, which was some of the wartime construction. Other stuff was destroyed. So, including Battleship New Jersey's preliminary stuff. There are some of the Montana designs in book three, and some of those, or at least one page of that, shows it compared to an Iowa class silhouette. So that is the probably the earliest document showing this iconic bow form. But besides that, the original spring styles uh, are gone. Because this is a one-page design study, it doesn't go into nearly, nearly the type of detail you need to design a ship. However, the U.S. Navy tended to use a standard type of superstructure for each type of ship. If you look at, say, American cruisers of World War II, and you look at the Cleveland class and the Baltimore class, etc., those superstructures are nearly identical. Even going on into the uh, subsequent Fargo and Oregon City and Des Moines class, the, the superstructures remain fairly similar. If you look at pre-war battleship designs, they all have very similar superstructures. So those sorts of details are not included in the spring styles. You'll get the major components like the armored conning tower. There's 600 tons of weight right there. And we need to know what thickness of armor we're choosing uh, because that's going to affect other calculations. But the rest of the superstructure is just a standard. Well, we already know that the battleship style superstructure in the 1920s weighs X amount. That's just a number you can fill in in the bottom there under fittings. Uh, they do tend to be inboard profile, so the side of the ship is cut away, and you can see major strokes on the inside. This much of the hull will be engineering versus boilers versus magazines, but not so much. And this is where the boiler technician's berthing area is going to be, and this is where the galley is going to be. It doesn't need to get down into that kind of weeds. Later on, if this general broad stroke of a design is chosen, then more detailed designs will be made, and then finally, contract designs will be made that show all the major components. On Battleship New Jersey, we do an education classroom program on designing your own battleship, basically the same thing that the spring-style designers did, where we give you the list of all of the World War II era weapons and engines and armors that were available, and let the children or adults, if you're into it, go for it, uh, add up the weights of these various things to see if they can design a ship within the, pro the parameters that the Navy General Board that is Ryan Szymanski has given them to design. This is a great math program we do. If you would like to do this at home, there's a link in the description below. If you would like to uh, come and book a class to do it in person with me on the ship, there's a link in the description below as well. So, what's your favorite spring style design? Check out those links for books one and three in the description below. Go through, see which ones you like and which ones you think, oh, thank God they went with what they actually did instead of uh, some of these early designs. And let us know what you think. My personal favorite is the Fast Battleship Design D, which is part of the design process that went into the Lexington class battle cruisers. My beloved Lexington class battle cruisers. Some of the other cool ones are the preliminary aircraft carrier designs for when carrier aviation was a brand new thing. This year, the U.S. Navy is celebrating 100 years of carrier aviation, which started in March 1922 with the commissioning of USS Langley, proceeds now to the present day. So those are some really cool designs. You can see what the Navy thought was important then before they'd ever built one. Uh, compared to what we actually got when they converted the Lexington class and then built the Yorktown class, etc. You can also see some of the 
preliminary designs for the Montana class. I think those are pretty cool. And a lot of the war-built cruisers, destroyers, destroyer escorts uh, get stuff in book three. So be sure to check that out. To read more on these designs, be sure to check out Naval Institute Press's series of books, Friedman's Illustrated Design Histories. He's got one for battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, etc. There's, there's like eight of them. Naval Institute Press is currently re-releasing uh, new editions of all of these books and those go through the design processes and use the surviving documents in there too. So be sure to check that out if this is the sort of thing that interests you the same way it interests me. Battleship New Jersey receives operational support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue uh, donating to support the battleship. And you can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.